when I went for my biopsy and to meet the first doctor that was going to um, actually operate on me, in the same waiting area, there was a little room off to the side. I saw a sign on the outside of the door saying, Hope and Cope. I had absolutely nobody to speak with and I felt so lost. So I got online and I started searching for other people who had gone through similar diagnosis and I couldn't find anybody. I fell in love with this organization. They embraced me. I mean, they all just loved me. And from that day forward, you know, I just talked about my experience of how I was going through what I was going through. And very shortly after that, I started to run the support programs for these young people to collaborate, to get together and share. So finally, I found one other lady who also had this mutation and we actually connected. We picked up the phone and we called each other. 25 years ago, internet was not big at all. We would actually just have almost like a telephone chain to call people. You know, it was so important for us to get together to share our stories and share the feelings that we were dealing with at that age. And for the first time, I was talking with somebody who got it. It was priceless. I was telling her how scared I was. I was telling her what decisions I had to make. And I realized how valuable it was to have a kind of peer support. Another thing that I heard more than once is that it wasn't until they connected with someone that they related so much to that they realized that this was more real to them than many of their friends before cancer. It was really about word of mouth and as time started progressing and the evolution of, of the internet, that really made things completely different. We started being able to reach out to a much wider audience and now it's so easy to connect with anybody. And so we started this private level support group on Facebook and slowly it started to grow. And I realized that every time somebody joined this support group, that the first thing they said was, it is so good to connect with somebody else who gets it. It was the place to go to find peer support and to find privacy. I think that advocacy needs to evolve. Every time I have a woman come into the BRCA sisterhood, the first thing she says is, I felt so alone. And it blows my mind that here we are 11 years later and still I'm hearing the exact same thing from these women. Why do they not feel that there's enough support out there? It just seems to me that there's not a central place for people to know where to go and that, that needs to change.